All right, let's do this. Welcome everyone to Mance Noise Math Lab. I appreciate you tuning in. This will be the first of hopefully many for a series I'd like to put out there regarding, first of all, actuarial reserving. So in this video, I just want to touch on a few things. Mostly just, what the hell is it? Disregard most of this stuff in this Excel spreadsheet for now, other than just this array. So what you're looking at here is a hypothetical situation where we have, these are claim amounts, reported claims, which consist of case reserves plus paid claim so the amount excuse me an insurance company would pay out plus any reserves that a claims handler may put up so that in the future it will pay that money out um, one of the duties of an actuary is to determine the ultimate claims in this situation for a particular accident year um, we use this information in all sorts of scenarios. We'll use it in pricing. We'll use it in producing financial statements for the insurance company. And the idea here is just to figure out, for example, in the year 2020, during the first 12 months, maybe we had 385, say, thousand, in this case, uh, dollars worth of aggregate claims. Um, and we want to know how much will all of the losses in accident year 2020, what will the final value for all of the losses in that accident year turn out to be? We call that the ultimate value of the claims or the ultimate losses. So claims and losses are kind of used interchangeably here, but essentially that's the idea of reserving I'm going to be approaching this from a very basic slash uh, introductory uh, style approach. So these are what are going to be known as the basic techniques. Anytime you hear basic or elementary in anything math related, it's usually not that basic, but I was thinking about it. I think this is this term is usually used because they, well, the, um, uh, there's usually some more advanced way of doing things and reserving is no different. So there's kind of the basic te techniques for reserving or estimating unpaid claim liabilities. And then there's more advanced, uh, methods for doing so. So in this video series, I want to just go through hopefully all of the basic ones um, to give you an idea again of what type of work actuaries do. And so that's going to be the idea. So again, we want to consider losses at a particular evaluation and we want to know what will they end up being at the end. So as you can see in accident year 2014, these are cumulative, so these are building upon the prior evaluation period. 12 months out for accident year 2014, we had $382,000 in losses. And then after two years, these developed to $730,000, so they almost doubled. And after 84 months, or I guess, what, seven years, these developed to 930,000. So these appear to be, notice that these are the same, these appear to be developed to their ultimate value. And I'd like to know, for the most recent year, what will these develop to be? Well, that's why we have all these different techniques for developing losses to their ultimate value. Um, so just to mention a few other things, it's. Uh, a lot of it's just understanding what this array means, um, as I mentioned a little bit, but just to elaborate, for example, this cell here, what does this actually mean? These are the cumulative losses that have 
that correspond to accidents occurring in calendar year 2019. So 24 months out, in other words, in 2020, we still have losses that occurred in 2019, and so far they've developed to be 762,000. Now, there's a lot of different things that one can say about this, but um, one thing I will point out is that we're basically just dealing with occurrence policies. In other words, the claim can be reported uh, after the policy expiration date. So maybe a claim occurred in June 2019. It was reported in June 2020, but the accident occurred in 2019. The For an occurrence policy, the insurance carrier would still be on the hook for that loss. And this is, this is common in auto, homeowners, and various types of property casualty insurance coverage. Hopefully you can see based off what I've said so far that what we have here is a evaluation of date of 2020, maybe December 31st, 2020. And that's why, you know, where do losses lie for 2019? They're 24 months out because 24 months out of 2019 is back to the year 2020, 36 months out from 2018 puts you in the year 2020, etc, etc, etc. So as you're going to see with all of these methods, we use historical experience to predict the future. What does the data that we've collected historically tell us about what could happen in the future? And generally, this idea applies to much of the work an actuary does. So hopefully you'll join me in this series of videos where I attempt to do my best to explain the concept of actual, actuarial reserving. Thank you. See you next time.